income, savings, assets, mutual funds, inheritance. These are some of the words that make up our personal finance. But do we really understand the planning required to have a successful financial base and future? Financial security and wealth management are vital to building a successful and enriching life. However, without right knowledge, skills and proper planning, we will not have those lives. And so I welcome you to Chapters today and we're talking about personal finance and how we can ensure that the kind of lives that we want to live, we get to live them. I'm excited to introduce to you my guest. She's Mrs. Nimi Akinkube, the founder and CEO of Best Man Games Limited, the company that founded the City of Lagos edition of Monopoly. And she's also the author of the book, The A to Z of Personal Finance. Thank you so much for being a guest here today, Ma. Thank you for having me. What inspired you to write a book on personal finance? Do I know that you have a background in finance? Yes, I was a banker for about 23 years. And during that time, I developed a strong interest for people's behavior regarding their personal finances. And I saw different scenarios. A very wealthy family, but they've overindulged the next generation who then spend all the, all the wealth, and the next generation has, has nothing. nothing left. It's just, it goes in cycles. Or you'd find a family who someone gets very ill and didn't bother with insurance. Mm. So the whole, you know, a the huge amount of money can be depleted everything. from looking after their treatment. At the same time, I saw people who systematically built wealth over time consistently with discipline, even if they weren't earning a huge amount but they're able to create significant wealth at the end of it all. So I developed a strong interest and I found it all comes down to knowledge. Unfortunately, yes. personal finance is not in the school curriculum. So we all just learn go as we go flow. along. Go with the, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I started off my first column with a Genevieve magazine, just trying to break things down into a way people can understand easily. Usually finance pages can be quite complex and a lot of technical words and so on. But if you just break it down in a way that's understandable. It becomes a way of life. Your mm. personal financial life should be part of your everyday, of your life, everyday life. Because it affects everything you do. Having a baby, getting married, having a job, losing a job, retiring, estate planning. Everything, every life event we have has to do with money. So it's so important that we do understand about it and that's what this book tries to do certainly and you yeah. went you literally went from a to z like every <laughs> single letter of the alphabet is yes. represented in the book and whilst we can't go through everything which is why you should endeavor to get a copy of the book but i'll just pick some of the concepts yeah and i'll start from the first thing you mentioned of you know one generation having wealth and not teaching the, the other, other how generation to, how to look after it, and yes. you talked about that in well slightly in boomerang generation okay that's which i found favorites. very interesting yes, can yeah. you for the sake of those watching explain the boomerang generation yes boomerang generation is you know you educate your children the children grow up at home and they go away you you think you've done the best and you've educated them and then they come back. A lot of it is to do with the economy as well. Mm. It's very difficult for young people now to go out into the world without any support. But it's becoming a significant problem, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. Because when they come back, what happens? Mm. The parents are probably in their 50s and have to start thinking about retirement. So if they come back... And there's nothing they come back to do. Yes, and they're just depleting that retirement um, Savings. savings, yes. So in other countries, I mean, I have friends in Europe and in the Americas who charge their children rent when they come back. <laughs> to live in their house. To live in their house, pay, pay something, help with something do, something, do something. If, if, no matter how little you're earning, try and just contribute to the family. 
Otherwise, it becomes a serious challenge if people are in their 50s, 60s, living off their retirement income and suddenly having to look after three, four children who've been educated and are back. And spend back. All, a lot so of money educating that one, the yes, children. Something that one has to think about very seriously. How do you navigate this? Which is why it's great that there's so much focus on the entertainment industry and also on entrepreneurship. We've just mm. got to change that mindset. When I was in university, it was, I almost took it as for granted that I would get a job. Wow. It was, it was automatic. I, could, I can't even imagine graduating and not having a job. job. But I know so many young people who have been looking for jobs for now such a no long time. No so security. we have to change that mindset. We have to stop thinking that you will automatically have a job. You have to think about how you will create jobs. And all the talent everywhere, is, it's extraordinary. So, it's, so the jobs are no longer automatic. How do we now develop people to be able to become entrepreneurs? That's the only way that we're going to get over the boomerang generation. Otherwise, they're going to be here for a long, 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 a long time. time. Some people will say they can't get married, they can't afford to get married. They're just stuck in this warp when wow. they should really be moving out into the world to seek their own fortune. The boomerang generation, letter <laughs> B. Another one, well, one that I think affects everyone yeah. is debt. I mean, debt can be a significant way to create real wealth. It's a matter of how do you use your debt. Are you borrowing to buy jewelry or borrowing to go on holiday, borrowing for clothes? Or are you borrowing for your education to improve your life? Are you borrowing to buy a home and stop paying rent? Mm. So if you're using mm. debt in, to use it for things that will enhance your wealth as opposed to things that deplete it, that, that's, that's the difference between good debt and bad debt. So it's not bad to borrow? No, no, it depends on what you're borrowing it for. Absolutely, yes. Okay. And then educational planning. Yeah. Now this I found very important because, you know, just like you said, people need to, when you sort of get married, obviously yes. you know that you're going to have a child soon. But like one of the things you mentioned there for like a young couple who yeah. has just gotten married, husband making some money, wife making some money, but there are many things you need to spend money on at that time. Yeah. How do you begin to grow a savings culture? towards your children's education? A major problem I'm finding is that many young couples are discussing the wedding and not the marriage. So money talk must start before the wedding. How many kids are we going to have? That should be discussed. It's, there's an amount of money you need to educate each child. So if you have not discussed money, your debt profile, where are we going to live, what sort of schools will children go to? You have to discuss that before the wedding. So if you're aligned with your suit, with your spouse or your fiancé, you know, in terms of finances, it helps a lot in terms of coping with all the challenges in marriage. Um, money matters are a leading cause of friction, yes, separation yes, and divorce. Yes. So it's a pity that we've spent so much time On discussing the wedding. the wedding. I met a young man recently who said, you know, he's earns 150,000. But they spent a million, 1.5 million on the wedding. So they are completely wow. broke. They're starting out marriage completely totally broke. bankrupt. That's not a healthy way to start. But wow. they wanted this sort of wedding dress, this sort of big party and that sort of thing. So it, if you're aligned, it gives you a much better chance to start a decent foundation. How, what are we saving towards? Mm. You have goals. We want to buy our own home in how many years. We have set goals. We want to educate our children in a particular type of school. The most expensive schools are not necessarily the best schools. Certainly. We have to Very always nice. remember that. A lot of people think that you've got to go to the same school that your neighbors or friends' kids are going to. Meanwhile, there are some fantastic schools that are public schools or private schools that don't need a huge amount of money in terms of school fees. We've got to think about all those, all those aspects, yes. Wow, so many things to think about. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we have to go on a short break now. Okay. We'll be right back. We'll be back still talking about the book A to Z of Personal Finance with Mrs. Nimi Akinkumi. You're welcome back to Chapters, and I still have with me Mrs. Nimi Akinkube talking about her book, The A to Z of Personal Finance. And before we went on the break, you were talking about people spending all their money on weddings yes, when they don't right. have, then they won't have money for the marriage. And it reminded me of one of your chapters called Conspicuous Consumption. <laughs> I will just read out your quote at the beginning of the book, which was written by Will Smith, the okay. American actor. And you said, too many people spend money they haven't earned 
to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't, don't like. like. <laughs> yes, yes, I found that was quite, quite a nice <laughs> I thought, you know, this is so, which is why, you know, I just thought this is why you would want to spend 1.5 million on a wedding when you earn 150K. Yeah. Just because, like you said, you want to keep up with the Joneses. But how do you think that we can not encourage this type I of mentality? It, yes. I think, first of all, we have to admit that as Nigerians, I do believe we actually have a problem because I look at other people from all over the world and we are people that really praise ostentation and we, you know, we, we just really, really focus on how much money people have and not how much people, ha how they got it. And we, we have that issue. So first of all, we have to accept that and know that it's a fundamental issue that affects everything Everyone. we do in, in terms of our national psyche and our individual families. But if we start life with a goal. You know, I find that if you have a purpose, if you have a plan, it really helps you to achieve things. Mm. If you, you know, you, you know the adage, if you fail to, if you fail if to plan, plan you, you plan, plan to, to fail. fail. It's, it, it goes the same way in your personal finances. If you have a plan, my plan is to reduce my debt by 50% by June 2017. It guides everything I do. Any money I have, I will start putting it towards the debt. Or I must be in my own home by 2018. It means I'm going to start looking for a property to buy or try to get a mortgage. It actually helps you to focus. And that's the only way that will guide, take you away from the peer pressure. The peer pressure is huge. It's, it's all surreal. around us. So for the women, you're, for, everyone seems feel very, very conscious of not not being different. They want, mm. Everyone wants to wear the same as Shoei B mm -hmm. because even if you can't afford it, you've got, you have to find a way of doing that. People are wearing a particular type of jewelry and you want to do that. You have to drive a fancy car even if you can't afford mm. it. it. It's quite overwhelming. But I dare say that if you actually have a goal, you will not be so taken by all by these around things you. around you because you will be focused on that goal. So that is the way. It's to have a goal, have a plan, you know, goals have to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound. When you have that, it's very difficult for people to sway you and make you buy a ridiculous car or borrow money hmm. to go on holiday when you're trying to borrow money to build a home, you know. That's Which the best way. That's the best way to do it. Which would then take yeah. me to another chapter, H, happiness and money. <laughs> and, you know, like you said, the... Wrong notion that more money makes, makes, makes you, you happy. happy. Well, it's nice to buy a few handbags and I'm shoes. I'm very sure without having to think about it. <laughs> but really, at the end of the day, does it really? You know, your quote from this says, money can bring happiness, but for most part, it's it is temporary. Yes, exactly. It is through generosity, and I found this interesting, that one can attain the best relationship with money by deciding to make a difference in someone else's life. You are giving meaning to your own life, Absolutely. and that joy the joy that brings this is a lasting form of happiness. Absolutely. Wow. I, really, I really believe that that is, that is so true. Most people, you know, as your salary increases or you get a bonus and you buy something else, initially you have that thrill of a new car or a new bag or whatever it is. But after a while, you just go back and you want and more and more again. and more. You want another one or a bigger, better, brighter one. But what I find is when you're generous and you see the impact you're having on other people, there's a different type of fulfillment that is probably the greatest joy, which is why you find many of the world's wealthiest people have become the world's greatest philanthropists. Yeah. There's something that drives that, that makes people feel so good about doing, doing good. It's part of human nature. Sure. But money doesn't, doesn't buy happiness. It buys temporary happiness, but not long-term, fulfilling, lasting happiness. It, it, of course, if you were very, very ill, you need money to get well. And yes. you're going to feel a lot better if your health is better because you've got the money. But a lot of people are spending all their health looking trying for wealth. <laughs> and then they spend they like all that, their wealth trying to get their health back. Wow, yeah. that's good. All their health looking for wealth. Yes, you just forget it's overwhelming. Family life falls apart. You're busy just trying to this make money, fantastic. make money, make money. People get ill with high blood pressure. They get they get totally stressed then out. They have to go back to the hospital they, to spend that money. Absolutely. To get well yes, again. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh well. And, and sadly, some the wealthiest people will still die. Hmm. The money is not necessarily going to get them back on track. So it's just so important for us all to keep things in perspective and think of you know what really matters. 
your What's family, really relationships. You know, there's That's so the much question. more. That's the question. And talking about relationships, I don't want you to say it, money doesn't matter because you know you do need money. To. Answers a lot of questions. <laughs> Even the Bible says it. Money answers a lot. So it really matters. It's just yeah. not putting your everything, everything on yes, in that exactly. money. Exactly. That's, what, That's what it is. And so we'll go to. I would sort of join it together because when I read family finances, yeah. joint accounts, okay. the things that bring families together, and I know that you know, like you mentioned. Money is one of the things that has caused divorce in marriages. Yes, and yes. when you want to have a joint account with someone who is not responsible, that could be very challenging. Yes. How should would you advise a couple to have a joint account and why? It depends. You have to look at your own unique relationship. Okay. So I, I love my joint account because I don't put any money in it. My husband puts all the money in it. <laughs> but ideally, you, you know, a joint account is a useful one to have where you have joint expenses, family bills, you know, diesel and. There's things that you need to put in the household expenses. But everybody, most people tend to have an, want to have an account that they don't have to account for everything you're spending. Mm. You know, so for most couples, I find you have separate accounts and perhaps a joint account for savings and for, for, for joint expenses. But for some people, it just does not work. Mm. If you're very frugal and your spouse is a spendthrift and will literally take Empty everything for school fees and go and buy something, then maybe you should just try and find a better way to save for the family's future. You know, you have to look at every situation. And if, one, if you try it one way and it's not working, you, you can you just, change, just it change it. Yeah, just change another system that works. Yeah. Yes. And you even mentioned that it's not just for a husband and a wife. Yes, for, for parents, for elderly parents. You know, many, many people in their 50s and 60s, their parents are getting on to 80, 90. The signature is becoming irregular. There's got to be plans made. What's going to happen if anything happens to them? What if they are not able to cater for themselves, and some, but, they, but their children don't have enough money and need to have access to money to care for them? Mm. At the same time, you have to be very, very careful. I know of a family, an elderly mother in her 80s. She made her son the joint account holder. A joint account holder means the money is accessible to both, to both parties. And if anything happens to her, all the money goes to the, the joint account holder. It's different from being a signatory. Mm. A lot of people make a mistake about that. A joint account is in both names. So if anything happens to her, all the money goes to this person. And that's what happened. And there was no other money anywhere. And this young wow. man had all the money. That's not, that wasn't what she intended to happen. She should just have made him a signatory to the account, which means when she passes, it, the account is frozen and it goes into the whole probate. Wow. But she made him a joint account so holder. So that's a big difference between being a joint account holder a joint or account an authorized is a, signature. Exactly. That's what it is, yes. A, a joint account holder is, is a, a, they own the account together. jointly, together. So it's a very far reaching thing. You've got to be very careful before you do that. Hmm. New wisdom, just in case, like me, you do <laughs> not know the difference. And then I, insurance. Now I like this because we seem to take this for granted. By the grace of God, it won't happen. By God's grace, you know, we, 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 we say that a lot. Yeah, we have an accident. <laughs> My child will not do this. What's the importance of insurance? It just protects you. You know, life insurance protects your family. If you're a primary breadwinner, and the primary breadwinner passes on, or is always incapacitated and can't work, at least the children's education may be taken care of. A fire in your house or a flood. You know how things happen. A friend of mine two days ago, there was a power surge. She lost five air conditioners, television. Fridges. I, I, haven't, I didn't want to ask her if she was yeah, insured. <laughs> I hope she was. Otherwise, wow. she has to go and replace everything. The insurance, if she'd been paying a premium once a year, not too much, she would have got a check to help her with all those. The car, you know, all those things, your health. So a lot of people can't afford the medical treatment if they get really ill. But if they had just paid the premium for their medical insurance, it won't cover every Everything. disease, but it'll certainly help a little bit in terms of a cushion. Get insured. Get insured, please. That's <laughs> get insured. And for, before we go on a break, let's talk about net worth yeah. versus self-worth. Self -worth. <sighs> That's N. I've, I've gone through this book. Like, you really have. <laughs> you know, I, I liked it because, you know, like you said, we attach a lot of things to how much we have, which is yes. our net worth, yes. and not actually who we are. Yes, yes, that's so true. Ex explain that as you explain it in the book. You know, sometimes you can get so caught up. I was a banker for many years. You work for a major bank. 
people say, where do you work? You mention the name, you flash your card. You feel really cool with yourself. Or you work with an oil company, you say the name, or you work in government in a very senior position. It can take over who you actually are. And when you step out of that role, you're almost nobody. nobody. That, is, that, that is scary. That is scary. And that's happening to a lot of people. They, they take over the entire blanket of this aura. I call it um, delusions of grandeur. Mm. So you feel very, very grand because everybody is so impressed with you. You work in this fancy company. You work, you're a top person in government or in an oil company or in a bank, you know. But who are you really under all that? Mm. It's so important for everyone to know who they are and make sure they don't, because when you lose that job or you, you have to do something else, for many people, they, they can't. They, they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start from. So it becomes like the a job huge problem. Them exactly that. You know. So they, they take it as if that's their worth. It's not. They were somebody before they got to that job, and they will be somebody after they leave it. So it's just to make sure you keep that whole thing in perspective. No matter how phenomenal you become in whatever you're doing, who who are you underlying all that? And you also said, you know, your self-worth is based on your character, your, your integrity, character, integrity, your, your name, your values, your core values. That's so much more important than all the prestige and the grandiose um, existence that you have. Well, listening to you, we need like a serious mental shift in this society because yes. I think it's that, because you know, It's partly the societal thing. It's the peer pressure. The society has put so much on wealth, so much on money, so much on position, so much on power. And it's forgotten the essence of who we are. So people are very impressed. I've, I've heard of children in a school, the parents to send them to school in the wrong car and they were too embarrassed. So they want to be dropped at the gate because they, they can't afford so that people won't see the, the car they came in. That, that's what's how bad it's got little kids. I, I agree because you know when it's well what we call summer here and then yeah. they go back to school. Everybody travels. Everybody goes. Where did you go? go, I went to so where did you go to? <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. We need to go on a short break, but we'll be right back. I love this conversation. <laughs> More with Mrs. Akinkwe when we return. You're welcome back to Chapters, and if you've been watching, we've had an engaging discussion with my special guest today, the author of the book, The A to Z of Personal Finance, Mrs. Nini Akinkwe. Thank you for still being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. And so, we're still talking about the book. Now, one chapter that I found very interesting was Next of Kin. Are you doing an exam on this book by any chance? Because you've, you've, you've learned it. I want to before. improve my personal <laughs> finance. I want, you know, we, we need to learn. So I really need help in all of this areas. And you know, you, it was obvious that you did like interviews. Yes, we did. We did. And it was quite alarming to find that many, many people do I not mean, put their spouses next to kin. I think that was the scariest. Yes, and yes. Some, some women said, my husband will remarry. And, and, the, and, and the husband said, that said when I'm in my grave, my wife, my will, wife remarry. will marry. And I'm thinking, boy, you're in your grave. Shouldn't she marry again? So they'd rather give their mm -hmm. younger their brother. brothers or sisters. Yes, and yes. I found cases where, in fact, I know I interviewed a policewoman who said, her husband died, and then by the time she wanted to claim everything, he had given it to his brother yes. as next of kin. And, and, so she and the brother was not giving her anything at all. Nothing. Yeah. That's, it, it's so common. It's so common. This is why the money conversations have to happen. So you actually do know and discuss these things. We have some traditional baggage. So in the olden days, I suppose the reason why you had the brother as next of kin was so that he would, it was assumed that he would oh, take care nice. of the extended family. There was a noble and maybe reason for it. some even marry the wife. Exactly. So there's these That's vestiges true. of those old-fashioned times. But now it's, you, you know, you owe it to your spouse, your children, to exactly. ensure that you don't leave a whole terrible wake in, you know, when, you, when you're gone. It's about planning. It's really traditional baggage. Because yes. it's not even about trust. It's really yes. just the way that, that our minds have been yes. wired. It's so important. Yeah. But another, another difficult one is many companies have this next of kin form. Some people don't give it back to their staff every year to update. So you even, you've even forgotten what you wrote. So I know of a man who had put his father as next of kin. He was a single man. And then he got married, was working for a major bank, and he had three children, he was doing very well, and he died. But that bank, next, he had no will, next of kin 
went to his father. And his father had had a couple of wives and lots of children, and they handed the whole check to him. It's just easier if you wow. plan for your exit and ensure that your loved ones and all that you worked for for so many years you know, goes to the people that you really wanted to go to. I agree with you. Otherwise, That's, it's the court that will decide that will everything. will decide yes. it. That's yeah. true, because even when you do things like driver's license and yes. all of that, they just type in the former thing that might have been five years ago. Exactly. But if you, haven't, if you got married, you've had another child, you haven't updated anything. So your will or whatever it is you have, you haven't updated and you, you, you're just causing a huge fight or a lot of problems for your loved ones. That's not, that can't be the intention. Fantastic. But that would take me right into my next chapter. Wills. The morbid wills. The morbid wills. And you started it fantastically. Wills don't, don't kill. kill. Yes, we sort of have an impression that when you're, but actually when you are writing a will, you're, you're addressing the worst case scenario. So you do actually feel pretty awful when you're writing it. But once you've done it, peace of mind knowing that you have done everything possible to secure the future of your, of your loved family. ones. Yes. And I think so what the, the mindset we need to break is like, because I'm writing it, I'm almost saying, <laughs> I'm dying next yeah, week. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, I'm in fact, you know, the funny thing is, if for a young man and you tell your parents I've written my will, they'll, they'll, they'll wonder. They would lose their minds. Yeah. What are you saying? And then if, if something happened to the person, everyone will say, oh, he knew, he knew he was dying. <laughs> <laughs> he knew he was dying exactly. because he wrote a will. <laughs> so many mindsets we yeah. need to change. You know, guys, we can't go through, if we went, like we said, it's A to Z, and already A to Z has 26 letters of the alphabet, and some of the letters are even two, yes, double. Right. So yeah. maybe you have more, maybe 40 or more chapters, so we can't go through all of this, but you need to get a copy of this book. It's very, it would help you to grow your personal finance. Where can copies be found? Oh, we're in all the major bookshop, bookshops, La Turner, You've got it in Glendora. But online, if you go visit our website, Money Matters with Nimi, we have all the mm -hmm. list of stockists, but both here and abroad, and Amazon. And Amazon as well. Um, Barnes and Noble, all the major, major shops. Yes. Fantastic. And before you go, one thing I'd like to talk about is you're, an, you're also an author. But like I said, you're the CEO of Best Man That's Games. That's right. Yeah. And so you did the City of Lagos edition of Monopoly, of Monopoly which I'll just raise Ta -da -da. up. Yay. <laughs> That's the Nigeria Centenary Edition. And we have Lagos, we've done Calabar, and next week we're launching wow. the Ghana edition as well, yes. How did this come about? It all comes down to my whole um, personal finance world. Monopoly is the world's greatest personal finance game. Okay. As you're playing the game, it's amazing. You're collecting your salary, you're investing in property, you're paying your taxes. You may go to jail. <laughs> you know, exactly. so it, it, it teaches so much about personal financial management. It's a, it's a great game for so families to play. Into... So just hide. It's one of the tools that we use to try to teach, and it's it's great because Lagos State Government has just made Monopoly an official sport, in the same level as chess and Scrabble. So we'll have championships and so on, just to get children to understand how to manage money because they're not taught this in school. The central bank and other regulating bodies are also trying to put this in the school curriculum so eventually we will get there but in the meantime we're on a mission to make sure every Nigerian knows how to save and invest. You know I played this growing up but I never really tied it to saving and investing it was just you know buying hotels on Piccadilly and Mayfair and, develop, and, developing, <laughs> and them, developing them, collecting them. rent, it's amazing. But now I see the depth yes, of what we're doing as a child. It is, yes. Fantastic it is. and so everybody can get this as well. Absolutely, this in is in all the majors in the, in, on the malls and the bookshops and um, the Palms shopping mall, the toy shops, it's, e it's everywhere. But the, the best thing is go to the website, Money Matters at Nimi, and the whole list, or investmentgames.com, and the okay. list of stockers <coughs> are there as well. Yes. Money Matters with Nimi and investmentgames.com. Yes, both websites, yes. We, we share a lot of information on all our platforms, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on our website. So we're, every day we're just putting, putting stuff out there, there that people can talk about and, and learn from. You're such an inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you for the book. Thank you, thank you for this amazing idea. And thank you for being a guest on the thank show Thank you for today. having me. I've really enjoyed being here. Wow. Another engaging episode, another enlightening episode. Personal finance, wealth management, wealth creation. We cannot talk about it enough. It is crucial to the kind of lives that we desire to live. And so if you enjoyed today's episode, go and get the book and let us all increase our knowledge base because you cannot do more than what you know. You do better when you know better. Thank you so much for watching and until the next episode, God bless you.